What a hard panel to follow. Uh, I'd actually really just uh, love to thank Gina, Sarah, Heather, and Danya again. So um, you, that was amazing. Um, and uh, thank you all. Good morning. Uh, I'm so happy to be here today. Um, I, before I sort of jump in as the voice of goddess uh, just announced, I'm in this really funny moment in life. Yesterday was my last day as CEO of the Workers Lab, and I am about to become the most popular, attractive person in a room as the president of a nationally endowed foundation. Um, and so in the in-between space, I'm really excited to be here with you guys to think about sort of the critical issues in our economy and how we build power for working people. Um, the Workers Lab was built to give new ideas about building worker power a chance to succeed and flourish by supporting experiments in ways that give them a genuine chance to work and learning from them in ways that people can actually build off of them. We are driven to make innovation work for working people as opposed to against them. Toward that end, the vision of the Workers Lab has been to support learning and experimentation that charts the path to a new reality, one where workers are actually more powerful, and they're powerful enough to bring, enough, bring about true social and economic transformation in our country. So over these last five years, so five years ago, I was really lucky, um, and Peter, I feel like Peter Calavito is on the other side of this, um, pillar, uh, but Peter and a number of other amazing leaders at SCIU uh, made an investment into the creation of the Workers Lab, and I can't tell you how many people have been struck by our use of the language of innovation, mostly because it's been uh, a word and a terrain that's been uh, used by corporations and techies and not by progressive worker movements. And so I actually wanted to spend a couple of minutes just describing why we think innovation is important. As a majority, people of color, first generation, and queer organization, we've really taken back the language and terrain of uh, innovation for three very specific goals. So first, we see innovation as critical for tackling the unfinished business of making gains of the 20th century universal for working people. So there are many people for whom progressive changes in working conditions still don't apply. These include workers in certain industries and sectors like agricultural workers and domestic workers. And it also includes certain segments of working people who continue to be excluded from the gains of the 20th century, like people of color, people with disabilities, black workers, immigrant workers, and our LGBTQI brothers and sisters. These working people are still vulnerable to specific abuses and practices of exploitations, problem that, problems that other workers no longer face or that other workers have ways to resolve. We understand innovation as a critical bridge to making the gains that mostly white men, straight white men workers have made in the 20th century available to every working person in this country. The second uh, is that we believe innovation allows us to tackle the challenges that are unique to the 20th century. Both new threats to worker freedom and well-being and new opportunities for building effective models for worker power building. As new corporations launch and old corporations restructure, they're profiting from establishing new types of work um, and working conditions that pose great and grave threats to working people in our country. And this is all happening in a context where we have a weak a week at best in a hostile uh, government um, that's really enabling this type of private sector action. At the same time, we believe that if brought to life in the right way, new technologies and approaches to organizing offer possibilities for strengthening relationships, solidarity, and actions amongst working people. We want to support those who are on the one side combating the degradation of worker power as well as those who are seizing the moment to imagine and build on new models of worker power given the current state of our labor market and economy. So first it's solving the 20th century problem, acting as a bridge. Um, the second is addressing the challenges that are unique to the 21st century. And lastly, 
We believe that innovation is critical to creating pathways for working people to become drivers of social and economic transformation in society overall. Given the size and contributions as a constituency, working people have, we believe that working people should play an outside role in shaping how society works. In order for society to change for a better and to address the critical issues of white supremacy, of climate change, and creating economic security, we believe that workers need to be more powerful. Over these last five years, we've made uh, over, we've invested in over 50 projects and partnerships and spent about $5 million uh, into a field. And so one of the things that I've been spending the last couple of months thinking about, like, so what is, what does it all up, add up to and what have we learned as an organization? First is something that's come up here and something that I was uh, really lucky to have a conversation this morning with Lisbeth about. Um, we believe that scale requires government intervention. I think we set out to support projects that can scale across an industry and geography and can, um, sort of have momentum, and we started, I think like many people in the nonprofit sector do, imagining scale as the virtue of the private sector. And what we quickly learned was that government is actually key to scaling anything that would benefit working people. This should have been obvious given sort of the history of the labor movement in this country, and unfortunately it wasn't. Um, we think that government sec well, the fact is that government sets regulatory parameters uh, to penalize bad behavior and reward good behavior. Government can act as an investor by providing subsidy and supporting meaningful approaches to building worker power. And government can also create a level of public accountability and visibility that neither the private nor the nonprofit sector want to or seek to have. The second lesson is about technology. We, um, in, in our field, there is a ton of investment in the future of work, in the creation of apps, platforms, and technical tools to build worker power. And what's been really clear to us is that those technologies are a, a means and not an end. Without on-the-ground organizing and direct worker engagement, we've seen that these tools at, are superficial at best and dangerous at their worst by unwittingly exposing some of the most vulnerable working people to surveillance and retaliation without recourse. The last lesson for me, and this came up on this panel, and I'm sure this is going to be a theme throughout the day, is that the silos of the field of worker powers uh, which has been splintered by industry, by geography, and approach, has really limited our ability to shift power in service of working people. We can't talk about work without talking about the safety net. We can't talk about wages without talking about wealth. And we can't talk about power without talking about well-being. The most interesting projects that we've supported are those that have building worker power as their North Star, while trying to solve some of the pressing issues and concerns that working people are facing today. So we funded all kinds of projects. A Native American construction co-op on the Pine Ridge Reservation, a partnership between the mayors of Stockton, Jackson, and St. Paul to explore how you use public subsidy to democratize workplaces, We've subsidized, uh, we've supported um, a cannabis business seeking to expand worker power to black workers in the burgeoning industry. And we funded the city and county of San Francisco to test out a model for a portable benefit for SFO workers. So our range is really wide as an organization because the field for contesting for power for working people is wide and open and we want to be able to hold as much of it as possible. We believe that increasing worker power is a, ne a necessary precondition for changing the rules of work, for improving the lives of workers, and building a more just society overall. And we're really excited to be here today and to partner with those of you who also believe in this work. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our program will resume after a 15-minute break. Refreshments are available in the salon.